Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brett Steele from Steel Rolling. Uh, I just want to do a video uh, about a competitor, uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner named Ian McPherson. Uh, he's trained out of Alliance, out of Atlanta headquarters. Um, just a person who was, has been a big influence to me in the sport. Uh, when I started off in jiu-jitsu, he was one of the guys who was on top, you know, at brown belt, going into black belt at the time. And uh, just always exciting to watch. Um, he's had an amazing career. Uh, he still has an amazing career. He had a comeback match. Uh, not too long ago against Joshua Bolin, who is a very strong competitor. He's won a lot. He's beat me twice and just outstanding at the world competitions. And he ended up winning that match on his comeback match, which is pretty cool. So uh, that'll be here on the video. I want to thank Budo Jake from Budo Videos and Alec Balding for uh, some of the commentary, some of the clips uh, used in this video. Um, this is all the footage I could find of Ian in some of his matches. Uh, there's probably a ton more that just hasn't been posted out there but uh, this is all I could get. So um, after the match with Joshua Boland, the rest of that is just all highlights. Going against Kron Gracie, Karon Gracie, uh, all kinds of people. He's just had such a career. I just wanna do a little uh, tribute video to him and uh, thank him for the uh, influence that he's given to a lot of us in the jiu-jitsu community. All right, well, my name's Ian McPherson. I belong to Alliance out of Atlanta. I train under Jacare here and Cobrinha. And something happened one day and he just started attacking leg locks. And me being one of his, you know, constant training partners, man, I didn't know what happened. One day things happened and it was like, I was getting knee barred, I was getting ankle locked. Uh, so his leg lock game was so like, kind of ahead of his time. Cause I don't remember really a lot of people going for leg locks like that. You ever see like a hungry dog with the bone? Like that's what it looks like. Like, like man, you're not getting your leg back. And not only would he attack leg locks from on top, he had a really good, um, really good entries from, um, uh, just from his guard to get the legs. Um, and man, it was, even, even as a black belt, it was still tough to like kind of defend the positions. Um, it, it, was such, it was kind of revolutionary before his time. Like no one was really attacking legs and he kind of was like, Man, he would just you go at here the... today for Ian McPherson. Okay. Guys, Ian is, I remember when I just joined Alliance in 2009, he was one of the most exciting guys to watch uh, from Alliance to compete. I remember he got second in the words as a purple belt, then he won the words as a brown belt, and every match he would do would be like the most exciting match in the uh, genetics. A modified toe hold we're gonna work today. There you go. I've had a lot of success with. This hand on the toes, I'm gonna grab too far. See, I'm holding your Achilles tendon here, and I want there to be contact on your foot. Your lace is here with my fork. I'm going to bring my other arm around. I'm going to lock up a kimura, straighten your leg, and it doesn't matter. Ah! The person was like kind of framing the face and trying to push them off. And, you know, a normal person would go, hey, I'm going to go for the arm bar. And man, Ian, he turned around <laughs> and started attacking the foot saw you the first time and I didn't know who you were but you're easy to spot with your long hair <laughs> and your grappling style. You're always putting it all on the line and, and constant movement. I've never seen you stall at all. Where does this all or nothing attitude come from? Well, hard to say if that's myself or what I come from. At, at Alliance we encourage aggression. Uh, Jacques Ray and Lucas are always telling us, attack, don't just sit there. You need to be moving. You need to do something. Uh, it was actually my high school wrestling coach who introduced me to jiu-jitsu in uh, 2002. And having come from that background, again, the, uh, the focus is aggression, attacking. If you're not attacking, you're defending. So around the first part of September 2018, I got a Facebook message about an upcoming uh, match possibility, uh, the NFC down in Atlanta. And I was excited to hear who the opponent was. Um, it was Ian McPherson, uh, going to kind of have like a comeback match. Um, he had been out of uh, competition for a while. He uh, got married, had a daughter, also took over his father's business. Um, so it had to step away for a little while. And uh, it would have been, you know, an amazing opportunity to get to roll against him. I've always respected him and always loved watching him, him uh, roll in his matches. Um, however, they went with Joshua Bolin, um, a Gracie Baja competitor uh, from down there in Georgia. Uh, really good competitor. Uh, I've competed against him twice and uh, ended up uh, Ian caught the toe hold at the end of the match and uh, it, it was pretty awesome.
You've had a ton of wars on the mats, um, all of them very <laughs> dynamic matches. But which one stands out to you as being one of your favorites? Oh, there are a lot. Probably my match with Eduardo Tellis at uh, the 2011 Worlds. Uh, maybe I did lose. I lost 0-0 on advantages, but I have a lot of respect for Eduardo. And so one of Ian's like really top positions um, is the clock choke. So he almost got that thing on Eduardo. Eduardo had to go full, uh, like uh, just you know, when you're in a clock choke, you gotta gotta go on your back to kind of get out of that thing. And man, he was stuck in there in there for a bit. It's always interesting to fight the legend, any legend, and uh, do well. Uh, he's a cool, interesting. Humble guy, um, and he was Cobrinha's teacher as well as Lucas's. So there's some lineage there. Uh, I'd say that was my best match ever. A lot of people talk about the black belt division being so deep, and you might be going into guys that've been in black belt for ten years. So sure. do you get a little more conservative, or do you do you not change anything? Well, like you say, there's there's no ceiling at the black belt level. At which point guys graduate no it's it's into infinity so yes I'm a small fish in a very large pond uh, the main difference is I'm not doing as well anymore uh, I'm the little new guy again but what do you expect what, the, when you're fighting at the world-class level there are no such things as easy matches anymore there are no good draws there there are no preferable ways to write the division because it's going to be rough no matter what you do but that's how it has to be I mean that's why it's meaningful to even get to that level let alone do well there If you could choose your next opponent, who would it be? Ooh. That's a tough one. Well, probably DJ Jackson, which <laughs> which works out because yeah. I'll get a piece of him this weekend. That's right, be tomorrow. And I, I don't say that because uh, I disrespect him, but rather because I do respect him as a competitor. Hi there, my name's Ian McPherson with Alliance Jiu-Jitsu.